Esther, you get to travel around the world for like a job. How amazing is this? What is it that you do? So I'm a humanitarian photographer and I get to tell stories for organizations around the globe of um, the beautiful work that they're doing. So um, mostly it's in developing countries and I get to sit and hear the stories of the people that they are, you know, helping and a part of in their life. Um, so I get to see like pain, I get to see sorrow, but I get to see hope and triumph and um, I get to capture that. It's the greatest gift. <laughs> what a fun job. It is. How have you seen um, the pain, you mentioned you get to see pain and sorrow with hope together. How is that reflected onto you and your view of God? Yeah, um, I was in the Middle East um, around Christmas time and it was really hard, the stories that I was hearing, but I saw I saw what God was doing through the church, through his people, of creating that refuge for people to run to, of refugees to run to, of being like, that's the rescue. That is where he's at. And I saw his goodness. People were just like, felt safe in him. Um, and so that's kind of that, that journey that I've seen. It's like, I've seen pain. I see it, but I also know that God's in the pain and the brokenness. He's closer in that brokenness than anywhere else. Hmm. What like an honor that you get to see that. I mean, I know God's word is full of that we are close to him in the midst of our suffering and you get to see that throughout the world. Mm -hmm. um, can you just tell me real quick a, an amazing story from 2015? Oh my goodness, there's just so pick many. One. <laughs> one story from 2015. Um, all right, so, um, so one of the men that I met, um, I met and I'm gonna tell you a story about him. So this man named Barky that I met in Ethiopia. And this is a tribal um, place completely. It's in the Omo Valley, um, hours from anything. And we meet this man and he is translating Bible stories orally. So he goes to, his family like tried to kill him because he wouldn't do this ceremony that he was supposed to do of jumping over the bulls. And then he would, you're supposed to take a whip and go beat women. He's like, I've read the Bible and I can't treat women this way. Wow. And so he said no to his family and then his family wanted to kill him. So his brother even, even took him out to a field and almost tried and God ended up protecting him. But he gives his life to the Lord and um, he went started going back to his village to share Bible stories. And so they, the whole family is sitting around in a circle and he's just like, tells the story of the lost sheep. And they're all excited to hear it and listen to it. And he's translating it into his own, his own language. Um, and so that to me encourages me so much because I get to see people's faith in the middle of nowhere. It's, it's not fake. It's absolutely real. Like he has dreams about God. He has, he sees miracles all the time, like visions. And like God is at work, like not just in America, not just in Europe, but like in these remote, remote places in the world. And so it just makes my faith soar to the mountains. And I'm like, I have to tell these stories to everyone. <laughs> and I think it's just so encouraging for us to hear that. Like God is at work. Like we strive so much to do the work ourselves, but it's him that's doing the work. He's the one who's like showing people who he is. Okay, so you travel for a living and you get to travel everywhere. What's your quirkiest travel thing that you do? Okay, so this is good. Um, I actually have two things I wanna share with you. Um, so one of the first things I do is I always bring a travel candle. Um, and unscented is the best because if you have scented, all the mosquitoes like to come to it. Oh. Just like a little candle. And I found that if you stay in the grungiest of places, no matter where I am, if I put on a candle at night, like it feels wonderful. <laughs> you feel like you might be in a hotel. Like I've had rats running across my floor and you put on the candle and it's just like, oh, this is like a spa. That is hilarious. So, <laughs> travel candle travel number can. one, got it. Um, and then I also have this little contraption that um, it's like a pop-up coffee filter. And so it, it folds down to a little pancake like this, like real thin, and then it's plastic. I pop it up, put a paper filter in it, my coffee, and just ask for hot water. I could do it on the plane, on the train, in the car, in the jungle, wherever. I pour a little coffee into it, and I have hot coffee. And so it's the greatest gift. Like this last week, I was in a house and they didn't have coffee, and so I got to provide coffee for the whole ah. family. And it's so wonderful. Everybody loves coffee. You take your candle and your coffee with you. Candle and coffee, it's all that you need. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Esther, one more question for you before we go. What do you want your legacy to be at the end of your life? I think that's so hard. Um, I, I think about like the impact in that of like, what do I want my impact to be? And honestly, I, I don't have a good answer for that other than like, I just want to serve the Lord faithfully and like whatever he's called me to do, even if that's death, whatever it is, like 
Um, one of the biggest lessons I've learned this past year was to face my fear no matter what it is, like to not be comfortable. And I have a tendency to come back home after I've dealt with a lot of hard stories and want comfort. Mm -hmm. And God's like, I'm not, I haven't called you to be comfortable. I haven't called any of my people to be comfortable. He's called us actually to be persecuted for His name. That's what the Bible says. And yet we want comfortability here. We want to be safe. And He's like, your safety is in me. And so that's what I want um, to always remember and to live a life that's like focused on that, of just like taking the jumps and going no matter what He says.